unknown to, to most people, a lot of the traffic uh, is not going anywhere. It's already arrived and it's hunting for a place to park. <laughs> The problem is that if the spaces are all filled up by long-term parkers, that other people who do want to park are very frustrated. They double park in front of the, uh, in front of the store that they want to pop into. They cruise around hunting for somebody le leaving. I mean, because that sort of parking rapture in New York is to be driving along and see somebody pulling out just as you arrive. It's really quite a thrill to be lucky. And of course, you'll think it's your own skill at driving that, that causes it. But if the spaces are all occupied all the time, a lot of this traffic is caused by cars that are hunting for a curb parking space. Often they circle the block, making a turn that every corner, interfering with pedestrians, paying no attention to pedestrians because their eyes are on a, all the curb spaces. They don't even pay much attention to the other cars. The argument that I would make is that because the parking is so uh, uh, cheap or even free, the people who get the space want to stay for a long time. I was taking a taxi from the Upper East Side to the Upper West Side, and I was stopped at a traffic light, and there, there was a fire truck behind us with its sirens going mm -hmm. and there was a guy double parking who didn't he was in his car but didn't want to give it up oh, give up no. this space he got and it looked took literally three minutes of sirens and horns from this fire engine before this guy decided to like oh i guess i have to move suppose we thought to solve the problem we nudged up the price of parking maybe by 25 cents an hour during the hours when there uh, are no vacancies uh, Maybe if it's a dollar an hour now, went it to a dollar and a quarter, nothing would be different. Well, it's still a terrific bar, a dollar fifty. And then there's a little bit more turnover, and you see less double parking. The spaces are full, but there's still some cars cruising. And well, what's the point of raising it even higher than that? Well, suppose we nudge it up to uh, maybe two and a quarter an hour, so that here there's one vacant space. Uh, and then a car that had been cruising quickly takes it. So we've reduced the amount of cars cruising. Um, maybe we go up another quarter, and then there's another vacant space, and um, it's, it's taken, but because of the price is high, this car leaves. You know, there's much less traffic here on the road. What happened to all those cars? You can say, I think what happens is that if you're coming to, say, like our, our visit today, if I had driven here, I would have had to allow time to hunt for parking when I got here, to drive right. It might happen, yeah, I might be lucky and park right away, but it might make, take me half an hour. So I have to arrive early and drive around. It isn't that there are any fewer people getting out on the curb. It just means that they hadn't spent 10 minutes hunting for parking. That's where the traffic disappears to. Right now when parking is very cheap or close to free, people are happy to park there all day. It, it, you know, they're, they're given strong incentives to, to get this very cheap resource and keep it as long as possible. You know, for stores, employees just parked out in front. Yes. Whereas if you're the store owner and you have a choice, you would actually prefer to have a spot that turns over 10 times a day with different customers. So you can actually get more customers coming into your store. You'll get more business because customers know that there's always a spot if they need it. It would be slowly incrementally, street by street, removing traffic from the city. Traffic that we didn't know was there that was just hunting for a place to park. But you have to have maybe one vacant space on either side. So we get it up to maybe 275 an hour and then 275 an hour at some hours. I think earlier in the morning it could be 50 cents an hour. The major reason for adopting the right pricing of curb parking is the amenities. It is not the improvements in traffic. You can take a photograph of the clean sidewalks, the new street furniture, the historic street lights, the brand new street trees, the new street tree grates, all the things that make a sidewalk wonderful. It is a spectacular view to see the, the street trees removed into the roadway. They don't interfere with the pedestrians. Um, and when anybody gets out of their car and puts their money in the meter, they're paying to plant the street tree. They're paying for these benches. They, they really don't know it that when their money goes into the meter, it comes right out and cleans the sidewalk or pays for uh, the amenities that they enjoy. 
And I think that if you see that happening on one block, saying this is what happens, see it could be done on one block, uh, and this is what could happen, I think people would say, let's do it on my block.